Battle of the Network shows. Join Rick Brooks and Mike Kogel as they explore the TV of the 70s and 80s through hand-picked episodes of their favorite and not-so-favorite series. to another bonus episode of Battle of the Network shows. I'm Rick here with Mike. Hey. And we're going to do uh, another one of our Listorama shows today. And the topic is TV shows from our era, the 1970s and 1980s, that we think uh, would make interesting comic books. There's many, many TV shows, even some that might surprise you, I think, or surprise us, that did become comic books in the era. But, of course, there were tons and tons that didn't, and we're going to kind of give you some of our picks uh, for what, what might have made some, some good reading material back then, huh? Yeah. I didn't put my list in any particular order. I didn't either. All of mine are shows that we've talked about. Oh, okay. On the podcast. I'm not sure that's the case with my list. It wasn't intentional, but it is a good bit of self-promotion. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Nicely done. In case done. people listening to this haven't listened to other episodes, I'll be able to I'm pretty sure. Them. Sorry. I, I, I think we've Re- mentioned all the ones that I talked about, but uh, yeah. some of them we've talked about more extensively than others, and there's only one of these that we've done a whole episode about. Oh, good. Probably not going to have a lot of crossover then. Okay. Well, that, that's good. Yeah. So I'm going to start with the first one on my list. Okay. Again, not ranked. Uh, this is <laughs> definitely something we've talked about. It encompasses a number of shows. This would be the Norman Lear universe Ooh. line of comics. Interesting. I'm intrigued. It, uh, I see it not a very big line. It, it, I think two lines. One would be your more socially conscious Norman Lear shows. Mm-hmm. Your All in the Family, Good Times, Jefferson's Maud, those kind of shows. Mm-hmm. The other one would be sort of the tangent, more usually targeted at kids. So your different strokes, Silver Spoons, Facts of Life okay. type shows. And I think it would be either an anthology where every month you would get short stories from all of those, <laughs> or an anthology where every month you would get, you know, one month would be all in the family month, and the next month would be a hmm. different one. But, of course, all leading up to the <laughs> Crisis on Infinite Norman Lear universes. <laughs> yes, it would. <laughs> of course, so this would definitely be a shared universe. Yeah. It would be clear that all of them would be in this shared shared universe. Right. And and uh, you know because you have because uh, uh, it happens in comics different artists and mm-hmm. people coming in, you would end up having all the same issues you would have that you have with the shows like you know Lionel would look different depending on who drew him. Or, uh, I like that. You know the, some of the continuity issues with Florida. <laughs> yeah, huh? that's very intriguing. Uh, now let me ask you this: Crisis on Infinite Earths was famous for one of the devices it had was the uh, the whole red skies mm. like where some crossovers basically had maybe a couple of panels with red skies in them caused by the crisis and that was their their tie-in yeah in the no- crisis on infinite norman lear universe would uh the the sight of red skies lead to a, a heartfelt discussion about colors or the lack of uh differences between colors <laughs> yes <laughs> i think so I, I, okay that'd be yeah you sold me i i it's an interesting approach, definitely. Right. And, of course, you know, even in the lighter line, mm-hmm. you would still have many very special issues. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and a uh, hallmark on either of those lines is if uh, at the end, it would end with a silent panel. <laughs> <laughs> would the uh, would the Comics Code Authority be approving these uh, this line? It, you know, it would be, it, with the, the more serious one, it would probably be touch and go. Mm-hmm. You know some of the subjects there, but yeah. uh, and they might just have to be like Stanley and and buck the code if they don't if they you know he famously had issues about or the Spider Man story about Harry Osborn being hooked on you know goof pills mm. <laughs> goofballs and uh, right. the Comics Code didn't like that so he just ignored the Comics Code that month yeah which makes you question <laughs> <laughs> like, what authority is a Comics Code authority have. Yeah. Hopefully Norman Lear would at least uh, have a spirited battle with the Comics Code along the way. Yes. A point or two. So. And, of course, he would have his version of Stan's soapbox. Yeah. <laughs> which really would be a soapbox, probably. <laughs> Norman Lear. <laughs> probably would be, yeah. I like it. Yeah. I would definitely read all those. <laughs> I, I, I like the approach. The, the the rich diversity of the Norman Lear universe would be reflected well in that, yeah. I think. Then you could have some crossovers. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that because this wasn't the first one I was going to talk about, but... I thought to myself, what in a weird way would be 
the absolute silliest uh, TV show of the era to turn into a comic book. And this may not be the absolute silliest, but I actually came up with mod. Yeah. Uh, so maybe we could just think a little bit specifically about what a mod comic book would look like. Yeah. There's really no need for a mod comic book. No. Uh, I mean, and many of the things that they talked about on mod, I mean, can you really imagine a spirited discussion about some of those social issues? like on a newsstand uh, <laughs> next to Spidey Super Stories or something like that? It would be tough. And I think especially with sitcoms, those kind of sitcoms in particular, there's not a lot of visual interest. Right, right. I the, mean. <laughs> especially like on Maud, you know, they're kind yeah. of like drab sets. and so. But I, almost in, in a strange way, I think just as entertaining would be a total like dumbed down version of Maud, totally stripped of all the social relevance <laughs> and just like a generic – domestic kind of situation comedy deal with, you know, Maud and, and uh, you know, you'd have the, the Conrad Bain and Rue McClanahan characters, of course, and Bill Macy. Uh, but just kind of a, a, just a show about a middle-aged housewife and, you know, maybe with kind of an activist side, but drawn in a semi-cartoony style, but more or less still looking like B. Arthur. And, and I just, I'd be fascinated by that. I mean, when you're talking about it, I'm imagining either, I, I guess, a Mad Magazine look. <laughs> yeah. Or a sort of like a, a newspaper soap opera look, mm. which is not as cartoony, but I could see Maud being a comic strip, yeah, a newspaper strip. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's not a bad idea. Yeah. I, I like that. Yeah, and a B. Arthur take in a in comics form, that would be an excellent visual. Yeah, actually, just a, a withering glare would really jump off the page. Uh, yeah, at the end of a page or like a just a one panel, it's her doing that glare right yeah I, so to me i don't think it would really work but that's kind of why i would want to see it so right. that's that was my well it would certainly choice. be part of my norman Lear universe line yeah well, that's yeah. good to hear that's good to hear all right um, my next one and uh one is not uh probably not going to be a big surprise maybe to you but also i do have a caveat with it which so it's magnum pi mm. and i did find some images from a magnum pi comic like a one-page or two-page comics from England. Oh. So ITV in England had some kind of magazine, I think to, aimed at kids, but called Look In about their shows, and they would have comics of some of their shows in it. Ah. So technically one existed, but I don't think it was much of one. I also saw something called a Magnum P.I. annual that seemed maybe connected mm. to that, and a Knight Rider one like that, and... At least one other American show. Oh, Six Million Dollar Man. But that mm. has comics now. I mean, that's... Yeah. Or The Fall Guy, that was... <laughs> oh, The Fall Guy, wow. Yeah. But I think Magnum P.I. is dramatic. You got car chases. You got detective work. You got narration already built into it. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Uh, you got the visuals of Hawaii. And, of course, you just got all the things that are cool about Magnum. Yeah. A little bit of drama. Humor. Good, solid, solidly written characters. Very nice. I'd read that. Yeah, I would like that too. And I didn't didn't know anything about the uh, there was any kind of Magnum PI comic. I didn't either. I mean, I was just familiar. doing like image searches just oh. to make sure, and hmm. then I'm like, well, okay, what is this image? Yeah. Why? Where, where is this from? It should have happened. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I like that one definitely. It's interesting that it seems like maybe earlier periods, maybe when there were more publishers of non superhero stuff, hmm. that there was more of that kind of. I don't know. Maybe it was like Dell or Gold Key or somebody was doing more of these kinds of things mm -hmm. that you see in dollar pins and things yeah. that you're just surprised. At. Right. And of course, DC had like Jerry Lewis comics. And right, right. Weird things like that. But I well, don't remember a lot from our period, other unless they were connected to a cartoon. Well, I do remember like uh, Happy Days comic is yeah. uh, one that, that, that just seems like a weird thing that right. existed. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to shift gears again uh, because I think you've given me a transition to, to one of my other picks, if mm -hmm. I may. And that would be the greatest American hero. Oh, yeah. I could see, and I was visualizing that as a gold key comic, actually, uh -huh. like in the time period, with totally generic artwork <laughs> and kind of generic storylines, <laughs> and just kind of like a a quick knockoff attempt. Yeah. But something that I would totally buy. Photo covers. Yes, photo <laughs> covers. Exactly, photo covers, and then inside, like anonymous, like art and stories, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you know, kind of like. Just kind of generic four color looking artwork. Uh, mm -hmm. that would more or less look like uh, Bill Cat and Bill Culp. Yeah, but not too much like him. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I, I think uh, I think that was a pretty good idea. Like a or it would have worked in the sense like 
as a licensed comic. The show itself was, you know, not too hardcore. It was kind of an early example of superhero television, but lighthearted, and, and that approach, I think, would probably go pretty well in, uh, in comic book form. Yeah, and, you know, it's a classic kind of comic that somebody's mom would buy them. Yeah. Like, oh, this has a superhero on it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Greatest American hero. Totally. I didn't have a lot of gold key comics. Yeah. I, I don't I, know if my, maybe my spinner rack at the drugstore didn't carry them. All. I did. I wound up with a lot of uh, funny animal comics and hmm. gold key somehow. Yeah, yeah. Like the happy days, I think, might have been gold key. Are they, they're the ones that did Star Trek for a long time. Yeah. Right? I, yep. Yeah. Yeah, they did a lot of licensed stuff. And I remember having like a Flash Gordon, a random Flash Gordon issue. Yeah. From, you know, they got, I got somewhere out in some rural new <laughs> spinner rack or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like in a bait store or some weird thing like that. Yeah, I, I think the characters bounced around, but I think by the time I was, uh, or, or and plus I had got like other older comics and stuff like and bought and like at yard sales and stuff, but I remember the publishing like Bugs Bunny and. Yeah. Like simple cartoon based characters like that would show up in, in the gold key line. Right. Gold key and Whitman, of course. Whitman, right. Like the, there's a whole, they're like connected. Right, 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 yeah. Okay, I guess I'm going to stick in the order. This is another one that won't be a, a big surprise because we talked about this on the show, Search. Totally agree with that. I was hoping that you would pick yes. that. I, I left it off my list in, in the hopes that you would and put I, it on your list. Get, there's like, if you do, I mean, it's hard to do an Im- image search for that show, obviously, because it's called Search. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but if you, like, you do like Hugh O'Brien and search and TV show, you can find some stuff. And there is like a blog that has like this one two panel strip. And I don't know if hmm. there's no, it doesn't say where it's from. It seems like some promotional thing. Hmm. It looks kind of cool. It's like in a two color, like, like a kind of red, like where you might have, you, instead of grays, it has reds uh, huh. uh, and white and then, and black for thinking and i think one panel is cameron yeah. or effects simile cameron <laughs> pushing a button on the computer and cool. you know n- uh, saying out loud what he's doing and then right <laughs> the, the other panel is like uh, he's saying something about i i better erase the tapes <laughs> oh. and the other panel is uh is hugh like dancing with a woman and flirting great but i don't know what the provenance of that is hmm. Hmm. On our episode about the show Search, we definitely talked about the idea that it would make a cool comic book. Yeah. And that I would be willing to write that comic yes. book. Yes. <laughs> Does that offer still stand that you would oh, be willing sure. to, to turn that into a I, comic I, book? I have to admit that plot is not my strong point but uh, as far as writing, but I, for that I would up my game, I guess. I have no doubt that you would uh, do justice to the, the spirit of the show. Yeah. And yes, I agree. That would make it an excellent comic book. They, they should have done that already, really. Yeah. I think so. But then again, the show should have lasted much longer, too. <laughs> right, yeah. So, Okay. Excellent choice. My next choice, uh, this is a little unique. Uh, this is kind of uh, something that we've talked about, and I'm putting this on there because maybe this would give us an excuse to finally figure out what the show is all about. Mm. Gemini Man. <laughs> Gemini Man keeps turning up in the, the <clears throat> BOTNS universe, and you know we know it stars Ben Murphy. Uh-huh. We know he's uh, athletic. We know he's, he's gifted, physically gifted. Gemini Man was, it didn't last very long, of course. It was on NBC in our, our favorite NBC <laughs> weird time period of the that late 70s, early 80s. Yeah. And. Yeah, what makes him a Gemini Man? Yeah, he, he's, there's some kind of like hybrid uh, human kind of deal going on, and it's vaguely science fiction y, and to me, that's enough to make it a, a candidate for a, a comic book. So I think if Gemini Man had been uh, more popular, it probably would have been a comic book. But to me, just the fact that nobody remembers the show or yeah. really knows anything about it and it's never on anymore, that's no reason not to turn it into a comic book. It's a great comic book title. It is, yeah. I mean, it sounds cool. Yeah. There's something, and to me, it's it's kind of mysterious. It's like a what what I'd like to see. Yeah. Just because, you know, what what is the deal with Gemini Man? I'd really like to, to right. find that out. And that's that's not really available anywhere. I, I think maybe some clips, and yeah. um, but I don't think full episodes. It hasn't been commercially available. Maybe he's just an athletic guy in every episode. Someone asks him his sign. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a Gemini, man. <laughs> hmm. Well, that might, uh, that might make the comic book a little less dynamic than I was yeah. envisioning. But but you never know when that's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, that's that's right. the thing. It's like a Dean Martin guest. At any given time, yeah. And it's always someone, a celebrity asking him. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. That'd be the yeah. Hey, Daddy O. <laughs> or 
Maybe, you know, maybe it's more, even more uh, cosmically oriented. And you could do like Jim Starlin could have uh, done a Gemini Man uh, series. Uh, yeah. Everybody would, would probably enjoy that. I so. bet, yeah. It would be weird. Yeah. That's a good choice. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I can't visualize it because... Yeah, well, that's... Other than seeing Ben Murphy in Battle of the Network Stars. Right. I, I see like Ben Murphy like in outer space like with some kind of weird like like gloves of some kind and like, yeah. so, uh, you know, a, a motion trail behind him. and You know, it could have nothing to do with the show. Yeah. Uh, just take the title and the, right. the Ben Murphy likeness and... Yeah. Let Jim Starlin write a whole, craft a whole universe out of it. Right. <laughs> uh, that sounds good. Hey. So my next one, I think it could be a comic book or it could be a newspaper feature mm-hmm. or a strip or one panel comic, Ooh. maybe, In Search Of. Ooh, excellent choice. And, and here's my really kind of, I would, if it, if it were a comic book, I would want each subject matter to take up multiple issues. <laughs> Really? Four to six issues. Really? Or a comic strip, I would want it to... It could be a one-panel thing, or it could be a strip. But I would still want it to be paced like a soap opera strip. <laughs> the point being that you spend a very long time reading this, only to eventually to get to the non-conclusive <laughs> ending. I love it. <laughs> That's great. But if it were a newspaper, you know, it could be like kind of like Ripley's Believer. Yeah, now. that that's a really good idea. And I think also extending it would be practical because, it's, it's, you know, you if you look at the subject matter of the series, they ran out of mysteries at some point, and you know, we're just kind of grasping oh, yeah. at straws and or, or rehashing <laughs> things. And, yeah. And they could do updates every now and then. Yeah. You know, if someone finds the Loch Ness monster, okay. Yeah. Do an update. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great idea. If they find Amelia Earhart, as they do every six months. <laughs> uh, I, I like all of that. Plus, I, you know, we've seen Leonard Nimoy in comic form, of course, in mm-hmm. Star Trek, and in animated form in the Star Trek cartoon. But I think he, he's he's good for that. Yeah. He looks good for that, and, and he has his different looks on the show that would all work. The yeah. And different with the, fashions and stashes. Like and, a hip blazer and cool tur- turtleneck. Yeah. Would be a very good look uh, in comics form. Definitely, that's a good simple look for a comic. Yeah, I like that. I, I, I must admit, I'm especially intrigued by the idea of that as a, as a newspaper uh, feature. That would, I think, that would be. That's cool, something that would have really worked. I think. Yeah, I think that, so. That's actually a really good idea. Hmm. Well done. Well done. Mm-hmm. I like that one. That that's something I definitely want to see. Okay, my next pick is uh, another I- iconic show that we haven't uh, discussed yet on the podcast, uh, long form, but it'd be Miami Vice. And I'm envisioning Miami Vice as like uh, kind of the era, kind of like the early days of, of direct to market comics. Yeah. I'm thinking kind of not like Marvel DC, but like somebody like an Eclipse comics where mm-hmm. it would be sort of like not really adults only, but kind of a more mature edge and, and appeal and kind of going more towards a direct market. So there'd be a little yeah. loosen up. They'd be able to talk about like, like drugs and, and kind of mature themes and they'd be like self-consciously talking about that kind of thing. Yeah. It'd be sort of putting things in and, and, and kind of pushing the envelope on purpose and kind of like slick paper that doesn't really need to be and, and you know, and, <laughs> right. and really like uh, bright covers and everything. Of course. But, uh, so a little, a little bit more mature, like kind of like indie comic kind of thing. But yeah. like, I'm thinking like a, a quality comics eclipse, somebody like that from like the, the mid eighties kind of deal. A little bit of swearing. Yeah. Yeah. Some, some mild profanities. Some T and A's. Yeah. Violence. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, I think that would be cool. I there or might Pacific be, comics. Is. Pac- <laughs> there might be Malibu comics, isn't that one? Yeah, I think that was. There might be like one that's come out later, like in more recent years. Okay, yeah. Oh, really? From like Dynamite or somebody? Okay, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking of like when the show was yeah, on. Yeah. No, I'm surprised it didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It just seems like you know because uh, yeah, marketed like teenagers or. College dudes or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think that could have worked. They could have gone even farther. Maybe they could have made it a rated R comic. Yeah, that that wouldn't yeah. have surprised me either. No, it wouldn't have surprised yeah. me. Maybe NBC <laughs> wouldn't be cool with that. Yeah, that's true. Well, it was well the show was still on. They might yeah. not have wanted that, but and I can despite the obviously Miami Vice is known for the colors, mm-hmm. but I can also be see it being a black and white, a very noirish kind of black right, and white. Right, right. Yep, yep. Yeah, either that's way. true. And yeah. like maybe like bright covers, but. Black and white, more stark in- interiors. Yeah. All right. My uh, my last one, I think, could also either be a comic or a comic book or a comic strip. The White Shadow. Ooh. 
And here's my thinking here. If it's a comic strip, somebody needs to give Gilthorpe some com- competition. <laughs> you know, there's room for more than one high school athletic-based comic strip. <laughs> totally. And when you're reading the newspaper about all the crap going on in the world, mm-hmm. what more do you want than to turn to the comics page and read a comic strip about kids getting VD yeah. <laughs> or racism or uh, class warfare or kids getting hooked on angel dust. Yeah. Unintended pregnancies. Right. Deaths of major characters. <laughs> well, this sounds great. But it could work as a comic book too because then you can do the basketball stuff and a lot of, you know, exciting layouts. And oh, things. good point. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. That would be, uh, that'd be really something that every day, you know, get home from work in the evening papers... <laughs> What's Thorpe up to? Yeah, check out uh, the White Shadow. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I would have loved to have seen that. I mean, you, you bring up a good point, though. Really, for years, I mean, we've had Gil Thorpe and and Tank Magnamary was the only thing that really came close to touching on sports, and obviously that was a completely different thing. <laughs> uh, That's a f- football. Yeah, or like an announcer. Oh, announcer. And it kind of like broadened into like he was an ex-jock that became a sports announcer. I see. I'm not sure if that one's still around. Actually, I haven't seen that in a while. But there was a fixture of my local paper growing up. I remember up. the name. Yeah, it was a it was a humor strip. Though. Remember the the name as I passed by it too. Oh yeah, yeah, was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. As as much of a fixture in our society, sports is sports. Not so much in comic books and comic strips. No. In other or in look, television. I like know. Uh, you know, there are lots of sports mangas. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Like tennis and heard. basketball and things. And yeah. Didn't seem to, to work, or people yeah. don't think it works, but... Because the nerds don't like sports. Uh, maybe not. But if, hey, if you get somebody like uh, Coach Reeves in there, yeah. I think that would work for everybody. Like, I know Gilthorpe, what little I know about, tries to sort of follow the school year. So it has a basketball storyline in the fall, and a, uh, or a football one, and then a basketball one, and then, you know, there's like a summer break kind of thing. Yeah. I think the White Shadow should just not try to deal with time. Yeah. Not quite like that, you know. Or move at the slower pace of a lot I could of go for that. Yeah. Ones. Very nice. I'd also volunteer to write that. Oh, you would? Okay, yeah. good. Sure. Mike is available, folks, for, for these gigs. Yeah. Dear Universal Press Syndicate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, well, my top choice, and this is one I really, really wish had happened, mm-hmm. and I would love to read this. Okay. I would like to see a comic book of Battle of the Network stars. Mm-hmm. I would like to see it written by Mark Evanier. Yeah, you could have a rotating uh, cast of artists, and but instead of like strict competitions, it would be sort of like Laugh Olympics. It would expand it, and they would be like going all around the world and like doing like really crazy competitions. Yeah, that would take them like to like you know the Parthenon and all these kind of different locales, and there'd be like hijinks and spies getting involved. So mm-hmm. it could be kind of like Battle of the Network uh, stars meets Mad Mad World. Yeah. Which Mark Avenir would probably love to do. <laughs> yes. Would there be anybody that would have been more well suited to write that comic book? No. And Expert could... on it's a mad, 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 mad world. Yes. And of course, you know, I'd written for Welcome Back Hotter and, and spent some time at Battle of the Network Stars. Yeah. Writing bits or I I don't know, hanging out with Gabe Kaplan. I, yeah. I've read those articles and I can't remember what, <laughs> why he was actually there. Yeah. I think it was to write material. I think but, it, yeah, and just think about I mean get somebody like again kind of like uh like bob oxner whoever they you know, wrote all those like dc or, or drew all those like jerry lewis and bob yeah. hope comics he mentioned get somebody like him or somebody that can just do reasonable uh facsimiles of all these celebrities and every every issue you could have it like a different cast yeah i think great. it would be like a maybe like a quarterly thing yeah not necessarily a monthly but, but like a series of specials or something yeah like 64 you'd have, pages like, epic like length stories yeah and maybe yeah. like you know some like celebrity theme backup features and stuff, but yeah. yeah, you'd have this like main. It would be one of those deals where it would play out like in three or four chapters. You'd have chapter one, chapter you know, and, yeah. and these kind of like epic storylines of Battle of the Network Stars would play out each issue. I'm imagining like a like a page devoted to Rona Barrett. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, like appearance. up in the corner, she there's a drawing of her in a circle, and then yeah, yeah, <laughs> yep, all this the gossip about some famous person. Yeah. 
and periodically, I mean, you'd still, you have all these other adventures going on, but you still would have scores and you would have winners by the end and you would have yeah. Howard Cosell. Right. So all those, those classic elements would, would be there. But somewhere in there, Gabe Kaplan would have to save the world. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think the only thing you might have to tone down a little bit might be the dunk tank. Yeah. I mean, you could have it there in some form, but you don't want to be too photorealistic with the, no. the drawings and that. More focus on the, the dunking. And yes. The, less. <laughs> the, the athletic uh, competition yeah. of it. There were Welcome Back Cotter comics, right? There were. I think Mark Emmer wrote at least I an issue or two of that. I think so, yeah. yeah. And Tony Isabella. And, right. Uh, so, yeah. I, I think uh, yeah. that would something that, that should have been should have happened. It probably would have been a, a nightmare. <laughs> yes. Or, I mean, I guess now that I think about it, you could do like a one-off, and you could have Neil Adams uh, just draw the whole comic, uh, <laughs> Battle of the Network Stars, by Mark Evanier and Neil Adams. <laughs> You know, he did the the cover of the Superman, or he did the oh, Superman did, Muhammad yeah. Ali. That's right. And uh, it seems like, in a sense, I think maybe Neil Adams' talent was wasted on, you know, Batman, Dead Man. <laughs> he could have been drawing Gabe Kaplan. <laughs> it's a shame. <laughs> That's not the style I imagined when you first <laughs> pitched it, but... Uh... No, it was neither me, me neither, but uh, <laughs> now that I think about it. <laughs> uh, that's good. Uh, I had a couple honorable mentions, too. Okay. I don't know if you had any. Uh, no, no I, I think, yeah, I, I, not really. No, no, go uh, ahead with... These are quick. One, I put uh, Sandbaggers, but it's an honorable mention because, of course, there is a comic that's essentially... It's not the same characters, but as we mentioned, the comic that uh, used to come out called Queen and Country hmm. was in, heavily inspired by Sandbaggers, and uh, so it's more just to get a pitch in for that again. But but I think the original Sandbaggers would have been a cool comic, too. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, Voyagers, I think, would make a great comic. Ah, uh, good pick, yes. I mean, you could do, I mean, just like the show, different time period, every issue, end with a cliffhanger, like, oh, you know, where are they now? Yeah, and free from the budgetary restraints of the show. Exactly, yeah. And finally, an Incredible Hulk comic based on the TV show. Hmm. So an adaptation of the show in the <laughs> comic form. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I guess. You know, you can still pace it the similar way where yeah. you know by page eight that you're going to get your transformation. <laughs> <You're> and, right. <laughs> and then it would last like a page. In fact, I think Marvel should have done a whole comics universe based on their TV properties. Maybe they should have, yeah. But really <laughs> stuck to the TV, you know. Like totally. Not tried to add the unlimited budget. Right. <laughs> Just <laughs> totally duplicate the aesthetic of, of the yes. TV series in the comic book. R- right. <laughs> Yeah, I like that. That, that. That's a great idea. But the one, you know, sort of thing you could, liberty they could take was would be crossovers. Yeah, that'd be good. Building a... Uh, Dare uh, you say it? A comics universe. <laughs> a combined comics universe in the comics? <laughs> <laughs> no one had done that before. Yeah. <laughs> that'd be good. Because they did, you know, the... Uh, Hulk cartoon in the 80s, they adapted an episode of that, the Quasimodo episode uh-huh. of that, into a comic. Huh. And I think there's something about, like, there's some deal with Red Brand, like they were going to promote those in the comics somehow. Hmm. Uh, but I forget the deal. They certainly that. should have. Yeah. Those are my ideas. Those are great ideas. But I think a lot of shows, I mean, the, the, the thing, as we know about TV at this period, is that it's not always visually dynamic. It certainly is not, no. And comics do need a certain amount of that. They don't have to be action right. oriented, but they they need some visual interest because it's it's a in a way a more visual medium than TV is. Yeah, um, or was TV's more sophisticated visually now than it used to be. Uh, sometimes, I was a big fan of uh, licensed comics. Uh, I mean, I got some of the like the Star Wars and like Raiders of the Lost Ark. I think right. there was a movie adaptation of that, and, and there was a whole least, series too. Yeah, like like a. Uh, Indiana right, yeah. Jones series. Yeah. That had, I mean, and they would put, you know, big talent on those. And Battlestar Galactica, even. Those ah. comics were, I haven't read any, I see them every now and then, but I mean, people like Walt Simonson worked on that, and, and Star Wars, you know, the, the, they had good talent on those. Yeah, it does seem like in this era, there were a lot of notable ones, and, and then some of the more oddball ones. Yeah, I think it's, you know, it's probably tough, or was, or would be even now. Just because of the, like, say the show's premiering, mm-hmm. and you're getting the comic into gear, and then the show gets canceled before the comic right. comes out. That you probably need some sort of guarantee that it's going to last yeah. before you want to 
invest in that. I don't know. That Battlestar Galactica comic might have lasted longer than the show, for all I know. Hmm. I'm, I'm sure I had some of those when I was a kid. Yeah. I, I don't really remember details about them, but I, just, I remember seeing covers and things. Yeah. I mean, I wonder, was there a Space 1999 uh, comic? They're probably maybe British comic or uh, something, okay. too. Yeah. That would make sense. Yeah, like, I didn't have a lot of... I mean, some of the, yeah, the Star Wars, some, and Indiana Jones, but I didn't have a lot yeah. of licensed ones. I mean, as I recall, like, I think my thing, I was I was pretty, I was not a discriminating reader in the sense that if, you know, my parents are going to buy me comics, I'll take them. You whatever just read whatever they got. Yeah, so yeah. I, I had, I read superheroes, I read Archies, you know, yeah, any pretty much anything I could get my hands on, including, uh, like, some of these licensed titles and, and things like that. But Yeah. So the thing is, like, so if I saw, like, a... a a comic book based on one of the TV shows we've talked about, I probably would have picked it up if I had a chance, even yeah. if I didn't necessarily watch the TV show. Right. Definitely, you know, but Maud. Oh, yeah. The <laughs> Maud would have, would have jumped off the shelves, off the spinner racks. <laughs> B. Arthur just glaring at you. <laughs> yeah. And Jack Davis. Yeah. Cover. <laughs> That'd be great. Or just put her face like where the, the Spidey Man, Spider-Man face used to be on like the Marvel That'd comics, cool. that little box in the corner. It'll be Arthur face. <laughs> <laughs> With the implication that, that God will get you for that if you don't buy this comic. Yeah. <laughs> God will get you if you don't buy this comic. <laughs> well, I think this was a good list show. Yeah. I, I like this idea. Had a lot of uh, good good ideas to share with everyone. Yeah. So. And hopefully I'll get some work out of it. Yeah. <laughs> I hope I can handle <laughs> writing a monthly search comic, <laughs> a White Shadow comic strip, and an yeah. In Search of comic strip. Yeah. I didn't offer to do that, but I would do that one, too. Yeah. <laughs> if there's a sudden drop-off in the, the frequency of the podcast, <laughs> folks, it's because Mike is wrapped up in his, uh, <laughs> his burgeoning right. comic book uh, sideline. Yeah, that's all I got. Yeah, yeah. that's good. And uh, feel free to uh, let us know on our, on our webpage or our Facebook group, uh, if you have any ideas or yeah. how you would, would see some of these comic books playing out. Yes. Join us next time for another exciting episode of Battle of the Network shows. Learn more, leave feedback, and suggest future episodes at battleofthenetworkshows.com. Follow us on Twitter at BatNetShows and like our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Battle of the Network Shows.